Hi everybody, Dr. Pingle here. Um, we are going to do a lecture on groups and differences, t-tests, and ANOVAs. So the core of what we're going to be talking about today comes from uh, a couple of different packages, um, mainly this one though. This is SciPy Stats. Um, so SciPy is a collection of Python-based um, functions um, to process data of lots of different kinds, and we'll, we'll be looking at that a little bit more as we go. Um, the stats package is what you would use to do um, most statistical testing. Uh, it contains a large number of probability distributions, uh, a large library of statistical functions, um, and uh, it's, it's kind of the go-to first step uh, if you want to do things um, like what we're going to be talking about today, running t-tests or running ANOVAs. Um, <clears throat> so let's, um, let's come on. So what we're talking about today is testing um, the differences between two groups, and specifically testing the mean difference between two groups to find out if that mean is statistically significant or not. Um, anytime you, you divide sort of things into samples, um, and whether it's two groups, which we'll talk about here, or more than two groups, you'll find differences uh, between them, right? If we just randomly pull out 100 people and we randomly pull out another 100 people, they're gonna differ on, the mean value is gonna differ no matter what variable we measure, height, weight, um, the degree that they like Cheerios, like any of the stuff is gonna be different. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to find out whether the differences that we see, the mean difference of group A and group B, is enough that we think that it is unlikely to, has hap to have happened um, due just to chance, um, due just to sampling. Um, we express that likelihood of observed differences due to chance as a p-value. Um, that p-value is essentially going to tell you what's the probability that the differences that we see could have happened just as a result of sampling or crazy random happenstance or the luck of the draw. Um, what it doesn't tell you is whether this is a meaningful difference. So there's a difference between statistically significant difference and a meaningful difference. Um, and we'll talk about why that is as we go. So it isn't the case that you can just look at the p-value. The p-value tells you whether the differences that you're seeing there are real but they don't tell you, or likely real, <coughs> but what it doesn't tell you is whether that is enough of a difference that we need to, to care about it. Um, and so we could ask questions like, are red states different in some way than blue states? Um, are, if we, if we took all of the, the counties uh, and we classified them as red states or blue states from the last election, and we looked at the percent smoking or um, the number of, um, uh, infant mortality or diabetes or any other kind of variable, would we find that, that red states and blue states were different uh, in some respect? Again, the mean value um, is always going to be different, um, pretty much always. It's almost impossible um, that those things will come out exactly the same. But um, what we want to know is, uh, is it a statistically significant difference? And then further, is it a meaningful difference? So one of the ways that I want to explore this, uh, and one of the ways that I encourage you to explore this idea, is not with the use of real data, um, but actually with the use of random data, uh, data that you are in full control of. My belief is that uh, by playing around with um, variables that you control, you can sort of turn the knobs. Uh, I can increase the sample size. I can increase the distance between the two. I can change the mean value. All of these things are directly manipulable. Um, my hope is that this gives you a greater understanding of kind of what's going on under the hood. And we've done enough sort of Python at this point that this code should start to make sense. Um, what we're doing here uh, at first is we are defining uh, a, a, a collection of random numbers uh, in, in Python speak. This is a vector. <coughs> it's a one dimensional uh, series of numbers. So we're using NumPy, uh, we're using the random module in that, and um, we're creating some normally distributed random numbers with a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one, and a sample size of 100. So that's the first line. And then second, we create a variable called y that's a collection of, again, 100 random numbers with a standard deviation of one, but this time that first value is 0.5 instead of zero the mean of this collection of numbers is actually going to be 0.5. Um, that won't be precisely 0.5. Again, these are random numbers. We don't guarantee that, that that number is going to be exactly right, but we're going to generate these random numbers in such a way um, that it should be pretty close. 
And then before we get into the statistical test, we always want to look at our data. So when we're comparing uh, the distributions of two variables, uh, our best first stop is the box plot. Um, so we create a box plot using matplotlib. Um, we give it uh, our variables x and y, and then we get the, the image that you see down below. So what we're looking at here is, a, again, a standard box plot. Uh, the red line is indicating what the mean value is. Um, we've got the, the blue box that's our interquartile range. And then the whiskers, sometimes these are called box and whisker plots, the whiskers extend um, to the maximum and minimum values that we saw. So what do we see when we look at this? Um, we see that indeed um, A, uh, which is in column one, or sorry, X, which is in column one, uh, has a mean of about zero. And Y, which is in column two, has a mean of about 0.5. Uh, and we could calculate those with NumPy uh, if we wanted to. Um, but what we wanna do, we're, we're, we can sort of visually see that um, the means ended up about what we're, where we wanted. Is the standard deviation uh, about one? Uh, in this case, we're looking at the interquartile range, but actually that maps pretty closely. You can see that that extends for about one. And um, we can see further um, that, that there are differences between these two, right? If I said, does this look like the same distribution to you on the left and on the right? Hopefully you would say no. You would say that the one in column two is, is higher than the one on column one. Um, how do we demonstrate that? We run a statistical test called the t-test. Um, so here we're using um, scipy stats. Uh, we're invoking a function called uh, t-test underscore ind, which is for independent samples, uh, meaning that there's no relationship between the, the two. Uh, we grabbed a bunch of a, we grabbed a bunch for our first pile, we separately grabbed a bunch from the, um, uh, for another pile, and we're comparing them. These are independent samples, they're not related in any way. <coughs> And what we get is an output of a T statistic and a P value. Um, so you can see those going back into variables T and P, and then we're printing those out to the screen. So T is negative 3.96. We'll talk about what that means here in a second. And our P value is 0 0.0001 and so on, right? It's a very small number. Uh, and so this is the probability that the differences that we're seeing could have shown up due to chance. Um, so uh, very unlikely. There's, there's about uh, one chance in 10,000 um, that these samples um, could have been generated purely randomly. Uh, if, uh, I should clarify that, purely randomly, if in fact they both had the same mean. <clears throat> so I said that we were just running a statistical test called an independent t-test, uh, t-test underscore ind, um, what is the um, what is the complement to that? What is the opposite of that? Uh, that is a paired t-test, and that's used when our samples are related. Um, so as an example here, um, pretend I'm uh, a mad scientist and I'm developing a growth serum, uh, and I've got 50 lab rats. I measure the length of those rats. I give them the growth serum, uh, and then later on I come back and I measure them again to see if it works. Um, my sample A and my sample the size of the rats before the treatment, and my sample B, the size of the rats after the treatment, are related. They are not independent, right? In fact, they are the very same rats uh, in A and B. So this is sometimes called a repeated measures trial. Um, <clears throat> one of the nice things about this um, particular statistical design is that the variability is controlled. So the statistical power is better which means um, I need a smaller sample size to detect the same amount of difference. Uh, it's easier for me to see the difference if I use the same rats than if I use different rats, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll make a note of that. So if this is possible, um, this is kind of the way things are preferentially done within sort of experimental science. Um, you, would, you would do sort of a, a compared um, uh, variability, uh, a, a controlled trial in which you're kind of uh, each thing kind of acts as its own control. Uh, that's not always possible, and it's particularly almost never possible uh, in geographical data, although it, it does pop in here and there. If these are not paired, um, then we do it differently. I grab 100 rats. I don't look at them. I don't measure them. I take half of them, and I give them the growth serum. And I take the other half, and I don't give them the growth serum. I just measure them. 
So two independent samples of 50 now, it's not the same rats. Um, you can imagine that it's a little bit harder to tell whether my growth serum worked, especially if my growth serum doesn't work very well. My growth serum works super well and the, grass, the rats grow to four feet long, then it's very easy to see and we can still make that call. Um, if, however, uh, my growth serum only increases their size by 0.001%, it's gonna be very difficult um, to tell the difference between the rats that I gave the growth serum to. Even though it worked, it didn't work enough to make it easy to see those differences. And so paired t-tests um, are for when you've got these related samples. It tends to have higher statistical power. It's easier to make those judgments. But if it's not the same stuff, then you have to use an independent t-test, uh, in which case the statistical power is a little bit worse. So knowing the difference between those two tests is actually fairly important. I would suppose that most of the time uh, when you're running studies, uh, uh, analyzing geographical data, you're, you're more likely than not going to have independent samples uh, in our case, for instance, uh, if we're talking about red states and blue states, these are not the same states, or red counties and blue counties, totally different counties. Uh, and so we would have to use an independent test for that. Okay, so to highlight the difference between paired and unpaired t-tests, uh, we're gonna have this example um, with the rats again. So in the first block of code here, um, we uh, in the first line of code, we're defining a variable x. This is the size of the rats um, before we start. And I've actually looked up um, can't remember whether these are lengths or, or weights. Um, let's just pr pretend that they're that they're lengths. Uh, maybe this is centimeters. Um, so my first batch of rats start out with a, um, a mean length of 12.1, standard deviation of 1.8, and I've got 100 rats. Uh, so I take the growth serum, um, I create a normal distribution of numbers um, with a mean length increase of 0.1, uh, so 0.1 centimeters a standard deviation of 0.05 centimeters uh, and a length of 100. And then in line three is essentially me uh, taking the rats, giving them the growth serum and recording that value uh, in Y, uh, the output variable. So X is the length of the rats before we start. Uh, y is the length of the rats after we give them our simulated um, growth serum. If we run a t-test on these, what we do is we run a t-test.rel for related samples. Uh, we're saying that this is a repeated measures trial, that the, that, the, that the rat in row one in X is the same as the rat uh, in row one in Y. Uh, we run statistical tests, we get a T and a P value, uh, and we print those out, and you can see those at the bottom. So the T score here, <clears throat> the, the negative doesn't matter, the directionality of a, of a T test uh, is not uh, that important, but <coughs> uh, we've got uh, rats here, uh, that uh, give us a p-value of 6.3 times 10 to the negative 33, which is, um, which is practically infinitesimal. Uh, that p-value is less than 0.05, which is our standard cutoff, meaning uh, we're pretty sure that the differences that we're seeing before are the size of our rats before and the size of the rats after are not just due to chance. There's a, there's a significance here that, that we are fairly sure about. Um, so that's if we're running correctly the related sample. But if we run the, the wrong test, if we run, if we assume that the, the rats in X and the rats in Y are entirely different rats, which they're not, right? You can see that Y is X plus the growth serum. They're very strongly related. Um, so we're, we're sort of running this test improperly. The output of that, we get a T and a P value. <clears throat> My P value for when I run the wrong test is 0.71. Um, so we would essentially, uh, in, in the, the parlance of uh, statistics, we would fail to reject our null hypothesis. Um, we would not be very sure at all um, that the differences that we're seeing here are just due to chance. Uh, and so we would conclude that the growth serum uh, probably didn't work um, wrongly, right? So you can, you can see sort of why the selection of the test is important and knowing whether your samples are related or not related um, is important. Most of the time when, we, when we're doing geog uh, work in geography, um, I, would, I would hazard to guess to say most of the work that we do, um, those samples are independent, so, and so independent is the right way to do it, <clears throat> but um, uh, not, not necessarily always. Uh, and if you're not sure about that, just be sure to uh, look that up when it comes time. You don't have to maybe memorize that, but just remember that that's an issue and you can kind of bring yourself up to speed. Um, at the, the third big code block here, kind of from uh, a true unpaired t-test simulates uh, totally separate rats. So we've got no serum rats and serum rats. Uh, we run that test. 
Uh, and you can see that the p-value for this one is actually 0.15. Um, we're still not sure. Uh, this is a, a properly run independent sample. I've got a, 100 rats here and 100 rats there. Uh, I give these rats over there the growth serum, and I don't give those rats the growth serum, and I just measure them. Um, it's hard to tell, right? Um, we're, we're, we're maybe... Um, uh, the, the differences that we see between those two groups are um, <clears throat> we're starting to get a p-value that, that seems like it, it might be too weird to be true, um, but we but but nobody would nobody would consider that strong evidence. Um, it's it's just too likely um, that uh, that the differences that we see could be just due to chance. Um, a one-sample t-test uh, compares differences uh, from a specific mean, which is handy if you don't have a direct sample. Um, in this case, pretend that, that I'm a, a terrible scientist uh, and uh, I just uh, I go on the street, I buy a bunch of rats, I give them the growth serum. I never measured them before, neither do I have a control group. Uh, I just give them the growth serum and then I, re and then I measure them. Uh, and then after the fact, I go, oh no, I don't have any statistical control. Well, what was, what's the average weight of a rat, uh, or the average length of a rat, I should say? Um, and, uh, and I find out that they're 12.1 centimeters, so I stick that in there. Um, I can use that, that known group mean as its own control. Uh, so here I run t-test underscore one sample, and I compare that to a, to a mean. Um, the more you know about the mean and the more you know about the standard deviation, the more accurate um, this test will be, but it's still not going to be as accurate um, as, uh, as the other two methods. And so um, <clears throat> we get the result of this back. Um, we, uh, we run our one, our one sample uh, and we, um, we get a p-value of, um, of, of very little. Uh, p is less than 0.01 or 0.05 for sure. It's uh, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 110. Um, that actually did a little bit better in this particular instance um, than a paired t-test, where I actually did go out uh, and, uh, and, and measure uh, the rats before and after. Um, so um, <clears throat> these are three variants of statistical t-testing um, to compare the difference be between groups A and B. If A and B are the same, you would use a paired test. If A and B are totally different, you'd use an independent test. And if all you have is the one, you can still make a comparison to sort of the group mean if you know what that is, in which case you would use the one sample t-test. So a t-test assumes uh, that, you're, that the variable that you're looking at is uh, normally distributed and that um, the standard deviation between those two samples is the same. Um, that's not always true. Uh, and so sometimes um, there are uh, parameters that you can supply to these tests to, to nullify that assumption that, that the equal variances are true. Um, so this is just a little switch uh, that you can basically throw into your code. Uh, if you're not sure about that, um, you, can, you can relax that assumption, um, in which case your statistical power is going to go away, um, but it, uh, it is going to be um, a more reliable test, let's say. You're less likely to make um, sort of a false positive. The t-test um, assumes normality. Uh, as we talked about before, <clears throat> um, geographic data is often not normal. Um, you can transform your data to make it normal. So the log transformation that we've talked about uh, kind of at length at this point in class uh, is one way to take a, a, a non-normally distributed data of a particular kind uh, and to make it more normally distributed. So we've done that, for instance, with things like population density. There are also um, tests uh, that, that complement uh, these um, normal uh, or what are called parametric tests. They're called non-parametric tests, and they do not have this assumption that your, that your data is distributed normally. Um, if, you, if, if you're pretty sure that your data is not distributed normally, then you should definitely use these non-parametric tests. Um, and this isn't a statistics class, but that's essentially the, the two big choices. Is one, you can transform your data to make it more normal, or you can run statistical tests that don't assume that your data is normally distributed in the first place. Uh, and I would emphasize that, that that's not a weird thing to do. Um, it, it seems not to happen as often as it should, uh, but non-parametric testing is actually just as easy to do as parametric testing in nearly all cases, um, especially for sort of relatively simple experimental designs. Um, so graph your data, look at your data, look at the distribution. If you, if you feel like those aren't distributed normally, 
um, then uh, make a transformation or uh, use a non-parametric test. Uh, this is an example of what that would look like um, just in code. Uh, so here we've got uh, an X and Y vector. Um, we have differences in mean. Uh, so in X, the mean is 12.1. We're again creating these random bunches of random numbers. Uh, in X, we're creating those with a target mean of 12.1 and Y, we're creating them with a target mean of 13.1. But notice that we're changing um, the standard deviation in Y as well. So whereas before we were holding that the same, here we're not. Um, <clears throat> if we run the, the standard um, statistical test for that, uh, we get the results that you see on the first line. Uh, the t-test is on the left, the p-value is on the right. Um, you can see that that p-value is 0.148. Um, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. We're not sure uh, that the differences that we're seeing are real. Um, if we run that same test and we relax that assumption, and here it's a switch that you just pass into the t-test, equal variance equals false. So we're saying, ah, we're not sure about that. Don't assume that those, uh, that those are the same. Um, it, will, it, will, it will test for that and it will sort of incorporate that into the test. And so you can see that the result of that t-test has a p-value slightly higher. Um, when our variances are unequal, um, we, we lose a little bit of statistical power, right? We haven't controlled our study as well as we'd like. Uh, and so we're sort of uh, we're losing some statistical power essentially on the uh, on the back end. Uh, it's harder to tell the difference between those things. So even though the t statistic is the same, uh, the p value is uh, slightly worse uh, when we relax that assumption. That's not to say you shouldn't relax that assumption. Um, if if you are pretty sure that your variances aren't uh, the same, then you should certainly say so. Uh, and again, you're less likely to get an erroneous result out of your test um, if, you're, uh, if you're honest about the inputs to these tests. So we've, we've, we've put a lot of um, faith on the p-value. Um, so again, the p-value is telling us the, the percent chance that the differences that we're seeing here um, could have been due to chance. Um, what happens is as you, as you increase the sample size, um, you can, uh, you're essentially going to make it more likely that you're going to get a low p-value. So it becomes easier to determine differences um, if you have a big sample size. So think of it this way. Uh, if I've got an independent t-test, if I've got, if I pick up one rat and I pick up another rat and I give that second rat the growth serum, but again, I didn't measure them ahead of time. I have an assistant do that and I pick them up. I look at these two rats. How do I know uh, whether the growth serum worked? It's almost impossible, right? Uh, you, could, you could totally just get those, you know, maybe one rat just happened to be bigger. In fact, it's almost certain that one rat is going to be bigger than the other. So you don't even know which, which way that goes. Uh, as, you, as you do this with 10 rats or 1,000 rats or 100,000 rats, uh, it becomes easier to detect smaller differences. And so on epidemiological studies um, where we're working with data that might be in the, the millions of records uh, or more, um, we can we can actually detect um, very fine differences between those. We don't necessarily know what's causing them, but we can say for sure, for for reasonable certain, um, that, that we find differences. Um, <clears throat> the t-test is an example of uh, telling, looking at differences between two groups A and B, X and Y. Uh, what happens if we have more than one group, right? So the United States is broken up into different census regions. Um, what if we wanted to compare those different census regions to say, are the, reason, are, the, are the people in region A different from B, from C, from D, and so on, right? So we have lots of different groups. Um, in that case, we use a test that's essentially an extension of the t-test called an analysis of variance or an ANOVA. Um, and this lets us compare multiple groups. Uh, down below, we've got a, a simple example of this here um, where we're looking at the magnitude of a tornado. Uh, rated zero through five, uh, and we're looking at the length of those, you can see that um, although uh, some tornadoes with a magnitude of two uh, have very long lengths, the average is smaller than three, which is smaller than four, which is smaller than five. And so if we run an ANOVA uh, on this data, we can, um, we can determine uh, that those are, that the difference in uh, magnitude here is different. Uh, that, the, that the length is, is um, different as the, as the magnitude of the tornado differs. Now, technically speaking, um, these groups uh, that we're looking at are categorical. They're not, uh, they're not ordinal. So in this case, the magnitude of the tornado 
has a number associated, it has a rank, zero is smaller than one, which is smaller than two and so on. So there's an order here that we're not paying attention to. So this is actually uh, just for illustration, um, but is actually not a, a proper application of this test. Um, and I should also mention uh, that if t-tests are sort of a special case of ANOVAs or if ANOVAs are extensions of t-tests for more than one group, all of these likewise have non uh, equivalent non-parametric uh, tests. Uh, so again, if your data is not normally distributed, as in this case they are not, you can see that the tail extends farther in the long direction than it does in the short direction. That's because of what's called a floor effect. Um, so the, the length of a tornado can't be less than zero. And that means that it's got a very short left tail and a very long right tail. Uh, and, uh, and so in this case, it might be better to do a log transform uh, of the lengths uh, or just run a non-parametric statistical test. So the way to perform a, uh, an ANOVA in Python looks something like this. So this is the, um, uh, the uh, documentation for uh, F underscore one way, uh, which is the one way ANOVA. F is the, is the statistic that you get back. So uh, T test that you get a statistic back called T. Um, and in ANOVA, you get a statistic back that's similar, uh, but called F. Um, so that's why the nomenclature is a little bit strange here. Uh, but this is a standard ANOVA and we'll do exactly the same thing uh, as the T test, um, just for more than one group. Um, and you can see that the documentation is actually fairly helpful. It will describe for you down at the bottom um, if it sort of gives the uh, assumptions here, uh, number two of which is each sample is from a normally distributed distribution. Um, and it says, if these assumptions are not true, it may still be possible to use the Kreskel Wallace test, um, which is the, the non-parametric version of that. So that will, um, that will essentially <clears throat> um, be, uh, be related to point two here. Uh, this is what that looks like, uh, and uh, so the idea here is um, if we're, we're plotting uh, how much the, the, the growth of a thing was related to whether they had milk or Cheerios or cheese or tacos, uh, again, I, I have fun with these simulations. Um, you can look at the means and the standard deviations of these um, for milk, uh, kind of our baseline mean of zero. All of these have standard deviations of one, all of them are size 100, so I'm just going to talk about the, the means here. but. Uh, milk uh, stand, uh, has a mean of zero. Cheerios, a standard deviation of 2.5. Uh, cheese, uh, a mean of zero. And tacos, a mean of 0 0.5. Uh, when we plot those with a box plot, um, the idea here is what we want to say is, are any of these boxes different than the others? <clears throat> so if I ask you, uh, are any of these boxes significantly different than the others, hopefully you would say, yes, it looks to me like two is different. Uh, and so our intuition after graphically looking at this would be to say, yes, these are different. If we run the statistical test um, using uh, the one-way ANOVA uh, and we give it our data um, and we calculate the F and the P, um, we find uh, that indeed our F statistic, which we don't necessarily care about, is 143 and our P value is uh, 6.5 times 10 to the negative 63. In other words, uh, way, way, way below zero. And I would caution, as you look at the results here, to make sure that you look at the back end of that because, uh, because these things are all going to display essentially in this um, kind of scientific notation. Um, and, uh, and it can be difficult if you're not paying attention to the, uh, to the end and maybe if you're not used to working with scientific notation. Um, that number is very, very, very small. Uh, it's definitely less than 0.05. Um, and so uh, in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis that, um, that, these are, that these are the same or that the differences that we see um, could have been due to, uh, due to chance. Um, the SciPy stats package has a number of these different statistical tests. Um, it has most of the main ones that you're likely to want to use. Um, at least until you get into sort of heavier, um, heavier problems. Uh, if you're in graduate school, uh, you, may, uh, you may start to push these boundaries a little bit. Uh, if, you're, uh, you know, if you're a PhD student, then you probably will. Um, but, these, but these have uh, a quite a strong array of, uh, of a number of statistical tests that you might want to use. Uh, picking them out becomes a bit of, a, a bit of an art form. You'll, you'll get the hang of it. Um, one of the ones that I would say that, that 
you know, is probably worth knowing uh, is the chi-square test, uh, which, which looks at relative frequencies between categorical variables. Um, I don't find that this comes up often enough in the things that I'm doing to, to emphasize that. Um, so I'm mainly looking at these sort of quantitative tests, um, but, uh, but that does sometimes come up, especially for things like um, psychology and certain kinds of geographic data that are categorical. Um, <clears throat> let's look at a, so we've, we spent a lot of time looking at um, simulated data, which again, I believe lets you tinker with and turn knobs in a way that uh, is harder to do uh, in some cases than when you're working with real data. Um, it lets you be playful, it lets you manipulate things, and, and ultimately I think it, it helps you to develop an intuition of how these things work. Um, if, if you play around with them, if you, if you change those values and look at the p-values that come out, um, I think it, it helps. Um, but it's also good to look at real data, so we're going to move into that now. Um, so this is the um, Fisher iris data that we've talked about before. Uh, here we're making box plots of petal length, uh, and uh, we have three different categories. And if we said, are any of these boxes, is petal length uh, different uh, for any of these categories than for any of the others, you would, you would hopefully, intuitively, by looking at this, say yes, right? You would say, Petal length for setosa is quite a bit lower uh, than the others. Um, and even versicolor uh, is fairly lower uh, than virginica. Um, so would you say that the, the, these are statistically significantly different? Hopefully you'd say yes, right? So let's see if the, if the um, statistical tests match our intuition. Um, we run that statistical test. Uh, again, we're running um, the one-way ANOVA. Um, we give it our data. And we get a p-value that's 4.2 times 10 to the negative 88. Again, way, way, way below 0.05. Um, so indeed, these are statistically significantly different. Or the difference between them is statistically significant. <clears throat> um, keep in mind um, that the ANOVA is telling us that something is different. It doesn't tell us what is different. Um, oftentimes, you can make that judgment by looking at it graphically. Formally, what we do is we do a post hoc um, t-test uh, where we are comparing between um, the two, uh, between pairs of, uh, of items on our list. So we can compare Setosa and Virginica. We can compare Virginica and Versicolor. We can compare Setosa and Versicolor. Uh, and so for however many groups we have, however many t-tests or, or uh, binary comparisons that yields, we just sort of follow up on that to figure it out. And it gets, you know, there, there are some details here um, that I'm not going to get into, um, but essentially the idea is you run the ANOVA on all of them um, to see whether anything is different. And only if that comes up positive, you dig in deeper. Um, <clears throat> this is what would happen if we did follow-up t-tests on our data here. Um, so the top line is comparing Setosa and Virginica. Um, you can see that we have a, a very small p-value there. Uh, we have a small p-value for the comparison between Setosa and Versicolor, and we have a small p-value between Virginica and Versicolor, but not quite as small as the others, right? So that difference, you can see that the bigger the difference vertically between the, the boxes, um, the smaller that p-value gets. Uh, so uh, in this case, this comparison uh, is, uh, has a p-value uh, where the exponent is 10 to the negative 71, uh, that's the biggest difference. This is the next biggest difference, and that's uh, 58. Uh, and then this is a smaller difference, uh, and that's uh, basically um, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 19. So, um, so the smaller the difference, the, 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 the bigger this p-value is likely to be. So far, we've really emphasized um, the p-value. So. Uh, the p-value, remember, its job is to tell you, uh, is the difference that I'm seeing here, uh, could it have been done, could it, what's the probability that, that the differences that we see could have come about by chance? What it does not tell you uh, is whether that test is meaningful. Uh, and we've also alluded to the fact that as your sample size goes up, you're more likely to generate small uh, p-values, even if the difference is the same. Uh, and so those two things mean uh, that reporting the p-value is generally not enough uh, and that you need to report an effect size. Now, an effect size is jobs to tell you what's the difference between uh, essentially the, the means of these two distributions. Uh, 
But to make this commensurate between all of these different things, right, that would tell you how much bigger on average the wraps got, for instance. Um, but what it wouldn't tell you is sort of that in a standardized way. And so by dividing by the standard deviation, you essentially standardize this metric. Uh, and the result of that is um, that effect sizes are now comparable uh, between all kinds of different phenomena. It's sort of a dimensionless number. Uh, and uh, one of the, the most common formulations of effect sizes, and there are a few, is Cohen's D statistic, uh, which is here. Uh, here you can see some samples uh, of what that looks like uh, with a couple of normal distributed, normally distributed, uh, dist uh, normally distributed groups of numbers. Uh, if um, if the the sort of scaled mean difference is 0.5, uh, if Cohen's D is 0.5, uh, they look like this. If they're one, they look like this. If it's two, they look like this. So the idea here is that what we want to do is be able to say at certain D values, how different are these things? So if I showed you these two values, and I said group A scores uh, this on a test and group B scores that on a test, would you say that those are different? Probably you would, um, but you might not say that they're very different, right? And so that's why um, a, a D of 0.5 is essentially considered sort of a medium level effect. Uh, whereas one is starting to get between large and very large, and by the time you get to two, that's considered a huge effect. Um, 0.01 um, is considered a, a very small uh, or really negligible effect, uh, and it's not something that we would um, put a lot of put a lot of stock in. Uh, it may very well be statistically significant. We may think that that difference is real, um, but it may not be meaningful. Uh, if you're interested, there are, are effect size calculators online. Uh, if you uh, find it easy to run t-tests uh, but are not sure how to run effect size, oftentimes you can derive uh, the effect size. Um, it's certainly easy to calculate given the means and standard deviations if you know those. But if you run a t-test, for instance, you can actually take the output of the t-test uh, and you can calculate effect sizes that way, which is often a very handy way uh, of doing it um, if you're not quite sure uh, what to do. Um, I, I do kind of like to emphasize these online um, statistical calculators. Uh, everything that you see here, you can do in Python if you want. Uh, but sometimes if you're not doing these things often enough, um, that can get a little bit um, tricky. So um, I at least like to make people aware of the fact that these um, online statistical calculators are around. Um, they come in handy fairly often. This is an example of some code to test that idea. Um, so in this case, um, we've got um, two pools of rats, two, two separate independent samples. X and Y, uh, but at group Y, we're adding to the mean value uh, by 0.1. So instead of 12.1, um, this value is now 12.2. We run our statistical test on this and we get that number back. Uh, and we find out that um, the T statistic uh, is 0.97 and our P value here is 0.32. Now, if we were running these statistics properly, we would stop right there and we would say, no, um, we are not convinced um, that the differences that we're seeing here um, are real, right? They, we, we could have just got this due to chance. In fact, there's a one in three chance uh, that the differences that we see between these two groups would have just happened randomly if they were identical. Uh, but if we want to press on that a little bit further, um, we can essentially calculate the Cohen's D statistic here. Um, and uh, we would get a number of about 0.14. Uh, and our expected value here would be 0.1 divided by the standard devi deviation, so 0 0.06. So, these numbers are not exactly the same. Um, our, uh, you know, there, there is variability in our random numbers, so it's not too surprising that these are a little bit different, um, but they're, they're sort of ballpark close. Um, our, D, our D value here uh, would have told us that we've got a very small effect. Uh, but again, since our P value here um, was not less than 0.05, um, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We are not sure at all uh, that the differences that we see are real. Um, to wrap this up, I thought it might be nice to go over a, um, uh, a geographic example. And you can, you can see that we're not really using a lot of map data, um, and it's not necessary that we do, right? All we're, we're not really treating anything spatially here. Um, we're, we're, in fact, aspatially comparing the two attribute columns, for instance, uh, or one attribute column for two different group, subgroups within that. So in this case, uh, I've uh, downloaded um, the election data uh, that's posted online. Uh, <clears throat> we're looking at that uh, in a pandas data frame. Um, 
And then in the next block of code, uh, really what I want to do is define two groups. So I define two groups here, um, whether uh, the Republicans had a larger share of the vote in 2016 or did the, did the Democrats. Uh, if the Republicans have a larger, if, if the Democrats have a larger share of the vote, uh, then we say that it's Democrat. If the Republicans had a larger share of the vote, it's Republicans. Uh, and we can tally those numbers um, by using a, a function in Pandas called value counts. And we find out that uh, about 2,600 uh, counties went, uh, went Republican and about 500 counties went Democrat. So now we have this classified variable that we can work with, uh, at least for the 2016 election. So um, we might ask, uh, are those two counties, are those two groups different uh, in some way? And so we could say, well, uh, is it true that, that uh, there are more voters uh, in uh, one group or another? Um, so we can use our pandas group by function uh, to tabulate by that winner that we just calculated and we can find the mean uh, using the, the, the values that we'd seen before. And we find that Democrat counties have a, uh, have a mean v number of voters uh, of about 145,000 and the Republican counties uh, are about 24,000. So Democrat counties have a lot more people in them than Republican. Um, and that should make sense to you, right? This is uh, a very well-known phenomenon. Urban areas tend to be more, more Democrat, rural areas tend to be more Republican. So that sort of checks out with our intuitive logic. How do we statistically test this, right? How do we determine whether we think that, di that the mean difference between these two groups in terms of the number of voters in a county is real. We run a t-test, right? We've got two groups, so we run a t-test. Are they independent or are they related? Well, they're independent, right? It's not like it's a before and after. Uh, these are two entirely separate pools. Uh, and so we run an independent t-test. So you can see us doing that here. Uh, and the net result is that when we do that and we compare the number of votes by county for these, our, our t-statistic is uh, about 21. Remember, we don't particularly care about the sign of that. And our p-value, is that less than 0.05? It's 2.68 times 10 to the negative 94. So it's way, way, way less than 0.05. Um, that, uh, uh, that is more than enough evidence to say uh, that we think it's very unlikely uh, that these differences in population are just due to chance. So we think that's real. We think that the difference in population, or the difference in voters, uh, let's say, uh, in these two different groups is real, right? That's it's not a spurious phenomenon. Uh, Democrat counties definitely have more people in them, or more more voters in them. How can we calculate the effect size? Um, well, uh, I couldn't find an easy function uh, to do that in SciPy stats, um, so I looked it up and I and I wrote one. Um, and you could look on a, the previous two slides to see a simpler expression of this idea. Uh, but this is this is actually precisely correct. Um, so this is actually better if, you're, if you need a Cohen's D calculator, use this one, not the other one. Uh, what's my Cohen's D for the difference between these two? Uh, it turns out to be about one. Um, that's a large difference, right? We are uh, fairly certain that the differences that we see here uh, are real and, right, so this is, the differences are real and we're fairly sure that this is a, is a, is a big difference, right? So this says it's real And this says it's big. And you need both of those essentially um, to be able to make a claim about what's going on. A lot of times you're just gonna see p-values reported, uh, but p-values are not enough to make this distinction. Um, you absolutely definitely need to look at the, uh, at the effect size. So um, this is uh, really just scratching the surface of, um, of, of what we mean when we're doing these sort of group differences. Uh, I focused a lot more on the t-test than the ANOVA. Uh, if, you're, if you're working with things like with more than two groups, you're going to need an ANOVA, but the, but the principle remains exactly the same. Um, I, would, I would say that, you know, very few people are, are real experts in statistics. We all kind of uh, figure out uh, what we need to solve the problem. Um, but a couple of kind of the major ideas here, what a p-value is, what an effect size is, those are likely to carry over to a number of different kinds of analysis. Uh, knowing exactly which test to pick, uh, exactly how to remove outliers, these are sort of details that you're going to have to sort of relearn and reprocess um, as you uh, as you come across them. Uh, your best bet is to sort of um, talk to people who do know what they're doing, uh, get advice, uh, read as much as you can. Um, but uh, but uh, hopefully this is a good start for how to do some simple statistical testing in Python.
with that, we'll wrap things up. thanks for your attention and we will see you next time.